Have you ever seen someone remove the entire end island and wonder how is it done? Or maybe you have plans yourself, but you are not quite sure how to get to it. So welcome to my tutorial on step by step how to remove the end island from day 0 to day 100. Just in 100 days you can remove the entire end island. And here is how. First of all, gather some basic resources. Then preferably you would like to find a village nearby. This particular village has one blacksmith and blacksmiths are important because there's plenty of good loot for early game. Like this 4 iron ingots, some iron armor. Now for a little bit of extra iron you can also kill the iron golem. You can do that by placing 3 blocks below you and attacking it from above. You can also do crit hits or craft an axe that also deals more damage. So your next step is getting a lot of food and you do that by collecting hay bales from a village. They are an excellent source of bread, one hay bale will give you 3 pieces of bread. So as you can see just from this we already found ourselves over a stack of bread. So what you want to do now is locate some lava near the nether portal so you can transport it using a bucket and make a nether portal complete. You do that by placing some blocks, lava, water, obsidian. Or something else you could do is go on and locate some more ruined portals in order to get obsidian. You can also explore shipwrecks, those often have really precious loot that will come in handy in later stages of removing the end island. This one for example has some emeralds. This ruined portal unfortunately doesn't have any obsidian for us, but it has a gold block. They are really good where it comes to crafting gold that is necessary for pigmin bartering. So if you see one, grab it with an iron pickaxe or a bat. And now that we have our nether portal completed, you want to light it up and we are in the nether. In the nether, the first thing that impressed us is a bastion. You can locate that using a free and field of view trick by looking for entities. As you can see, when we are looking somewhere else, we have zero entities, but when we look over there, we have a bunch of entities. That is a lot of entities reminiscent of a bastion. So it's likely a bastion is over there. And as we can see, there is a bastion here. Don't forget that piglins are extremely dangerous and uh, they can pack a punch, especially in hardcore mode, especially with not perfect armor. While traversing the bastion, you want to strategically hide from piglin brutes. They can almost certainly one-shot you. So deal with them from afar. As you can see, we have entered the bastion and we have chests. In those chests we can find pretty important loot. Especially important loots are iron, gold and food. As you can see, we have managed to find plenty of useful resources just in one bastion. You might also want to gather some more extra gold blocks and gold ingots. Now that you have found yourself plenty of gold, you want to trap couple piglins in a hole and give it to them. They will give you a plenty of useful loot in form of arrows, obsidian and most importantly ender pearls. But some other useful loot includes nether quartz and fire resistance potion. After you obtain enough ender pearls from piglin bartering, you want to locate a fortress. Fortress is a necessary part of progression because you need it for obtaining blaze rods. Drink your fire res potion and blazes can spawn on the entire area of the fortress, but what might come in useful is locating a blaze spawner like this one remember that fire resistance only grants you the 
immunity to long range attack of the blaze and if you come in close they are going to hit you pretty hard even though you have fire resistance also remember to punch out the fire near the spawner because it reduces the rates of blaze spawning some more advanced strategies you might want to use is mining the area around the spawner to increase the rates or bed bombing that will also further increase the rates of your spawner. The moment you have 7 blaze rods you can get out from the end and get to crafting your ender eye. So one eye and follow it for a while. Depending on your starting position you might want to throw another one after a couple hundred blocks to confirm the way you are going. Don't spam your ender eyes because they have a chance of breaking. When you reach the chunk that uh, the entrance is in, ender eye is going to go straight down. Now you have to locate using F3 4x4 block in the chunk. So it's right here. We have four blocks to one chunk border and four blocks to the other chunk border. Now you can stick straight down, but that is always producing some sort of risk. So I would suggest digging a two by one line of blocks. until you finally reach the entrance. What you want to do now is navigate the stronghold until you can find the portal room. In the stronghold you often can find libraries. They are a really good source of books and enchanted books. Also this paper might come in handy later too. And if you don't have enough string for beds or a bow, you might also grab it from here. Along the way you might also find those chests you can find iron or even ender pearls in there. Mine the spawner, we don't need it. Mine the blocks leading up to your place so nothing can get you. And place in the ender eyes. Every portal frame has a 1 in 10 chance of being filled with ender eye. So usually there is at least one eye in the portal. Now go on to defeat the ender dragon, whether it is by just using a bow and arrow. Or wait for it to cycle back around and blow it up using bats. And now we have access to one of the gateways. You want to go to it and enter it. Now what you want to locate is an end city, specifically one with an end ship. You want to raid it for really OP loot and especially the end ship for its elytra. Don't forget to bring some gunpowder and paper with you so you can craft fireworks. Now you can safely get back to main island and get back to the overworld. Okay, so if we want to destroy entire end island we need to take care of obsidian pillars. And for that you might want a beacon. I would really recommend it. You need 164 resource blocks for a full beacon pyramid. And you can do that easily by finding a iron ore vein. They on average will give you enough for one beacon pyramid. Or just by setting up an easy iron farm by iron exo4. But of course, for a beacon pyramid we actually need a beacon. And for that, looting free sword might come in handy. Wither Skeletons have a really low chance of dropping a Wither Skeleton head and you need 3 of them in order to make a beacon. And once you've got all 3 of them, you just need to go grab 4 pieces of soul sand, return to the end dimension, duck underneath the end portal and start summoning the wither like this. 
This way, Wither is going to be stuck in the bedrock and won't be able to escape and attack you. And now you can just kill it. From your brand new acquired Nether Star, you can craft a beacon using 3 obsidian, 5 glass, and a Nether Star. And you have a beacon. Set up your acquired beacon. You need a 9x9 at the bottom and a pyramid shape. If you done it correctly, you should have no blocks left out of 164. Place your beacon and uh, enable haste 2. Now fly to the top of the nearest obsidian tower and start mining it. My preferred way of mining obsidian towers is mining them from top to bottom but you could also go layer by layer. Top to bottom will require a little bit less of your attention. But still you are running the possibility of mining straight to the void. And falling to your death. What is absolutely not appreciated in a hardcore. So to avoid that, place a ring of blocks around the bottom of every tower in the end dimension. and while mining, stay at the edge of the block. This will prevent you from falling to your death. Now you have to spend over 20 hours mining obsidian. So that's why you would preferably do that while being IFK, like this. You are just locking the button, either a unplug mouse trick, if you unplug your mouse while holding a button, Minecraft will recognize this as you were holding the button. And every time you reach the bottom of the pillar, fill that hole up so you won't fall there. If you start mining, for example, here. If I didn't plug that hole, you could still fall into the void. This is a same IFK method, but it works wonders. You can do simple tasks around the house while still mining obsidian. You can also use F3 plus T, your buttons should also remain pressed when you reload texture packs or any kind of software like Tweakeroo that enables you to lock your right click or left click button. Remember there's on average more than 40,000 blocks of obsidian in here. So yes, this is the most time consuming task in the entire process. Now that you have removed all the obsidian towers, Remove the remaining blocks in the way, such as iron bars. Now what we have to do is complete our material list for the TNT duper. And in the other world you want to locate biome called swamp. You want to clear that swamp of any trees and flatten the terrain. Now during the night slimes are going to be likely to spawn in the swamp. Is the best way to get slimes in the early game. We need 36 slime blocks and that is 324 slime bolts. That's a uh, 5 stacks plus 4. When slimes are no longer spawning, just fly up. 130 blocks also repeat the process until you finally find the slimes you need and as you can see now we have a fresh batch of slimes repeat the process until you have 324 slime blocks and for our TNT duper we need 38 slime blocks 8 observers 7 glass blocks 9 pistons 8 sticky pistons 4 blocks of redstone, 2 cobblestone walls, 2 coral fans of any kind. You can find them in uh, warm oceans, in coral reefs. 
to detect on rails, to minecarts to power those rails, to glowstone or any kind of glowing block, and to TNT. Also couple stacks of random building blocks to measure everything and uh, a scaffolding. Okay, now that you are back in the end dimension, fly around to find the most remote place on your entire end island. Find the most remote spots in your end island. For me, this little part right here is the most to the west. Build up couple blocks in that direction and now build all the way across. Once you think you have reached the most remote corner on the positive Z and negative X direction, so southwest, fly in the straight line east to confirm that nothing is standing out outside of the line you have just created. Now at the end of the line, build up to about Y, could be 91, could be 92, it doesn't make a big difference. From here build a small 6x10 platform in the south and west direction. Place your TNT like on the screen. Then remove the block underneath the TNT. We have to do it now because if we do that later, the TNT is going to explode. Start building a TNT duper by following what's on screen. This TNT duper was presented by Raceworks. It works in versions above 1.13, so if you play above 1.13, you should be good to go with this machine. If you are playing before that, you have to find a design yourself. Remember to place coral fans on the side of the slime block, not on the floor or on the top of the slime. This piston utilizes bad powering, so if you place this piston before placing in redstone block, it won't be extended. So to fix that, just break the piston or update it. Now that your machine is ready, go down here, place a temporary block, place a detector rail on it, place your minecart on that block and power the piston next to it. Depower it, break the temporary block and repeat the process. Now that your machine is ready, take a note on what Y level is this observer located. In my case this observer is at block negative 193, 133. If we fly east we will get east is positive x so to that number we have to add about 200 blocks in positive x so it will be about 193, 133. So go back to your line and start making it all the way across again. Until you think that there's no more island 
feather from the end of the line. Now fly all the way across to confirm your observation. Yes, there's no more island after this point. So now go back to the end of the line, extend it by couple blocks and go up to the coordinates you have just marked. For me, it's 93, 133. Accept. You have to remember when you start using the machine, it's going to get moved once. So for me, those coordinates are 93, 132. At this exact block I'm standing on needs to be a sticky piston facing south. Remember to first place in a piston and then place in the redstone block. Not the other way around because then something like this is going to happen and we don't want it. Sticky piston, slime block, redstone block and one block gap and the normal piston facing north. One block gap, sticky piston, slime block, redstone block, one block gap and normal piston facing north. Break all the unnecessary blocks. What you want to do is fly around and find out if any of the bedrock blocks are going to be in your way. As you can see, this block is precisely in my way. So let's use bedrock breaking leeches to remove it. Place a piston like that. Place three solid blocks in this configuration. Place TNT right here and right here. Lever in the middle. Break this block. Switch the lever on and spam right click in this corner. As you can see the bedrock was removed. Repeat this process on as many bedrock blocks as there are in the way of the TNT duper. You don't have to remove bedrock from gateways because they are low enough that this won't affect your machine. Now that you have removed all the bedrock in the way of the machine, go collect everything that is in the end dimension and you would rather not have it blown up. So things like the beacon you have used for removing obsidian pillars or any other resources or chests when you store the obsidian, any farms you could have with the entrance portal or any mobs you might have brought here. Now that you have collected everything you wanted from the end, I strongly recommend you collect the dragon egg too, because if you don't do that, there's no other way of getting a dragon egg in the future. And now cover your exit portal with obsidian. It will prevent the TNT from going to the overworld and destroying the landscape around spawn. Now that you've done all the necessary steps, go up to your machine and start removing the platform you have built it on. I strongly suggest you use something else than cobblestone, for example dirt, because dirt can be instant mine and cobblestone can. Mine down this pillar because if you don't do that, there's a really high chance it's not going to get entirely blown up with TNT. Fly back up, sit inside of this minecart and break the redstone block above your head. Especially don't forget about those two glass blocks and this observer and this piston. If you forget about them, the TNT dupers won't work properly. Now that you have done everything, it should look more or less like that. As you can see, some small pieces of cobblestone are being left behind, but that's why the machine runs four sets of TNT over every block. While running the machine, remember to look up so you won't trigger any endermans. And just like that, run the machine for a couple of hours and you should have a perfectly clean end with only the entrance obsidian platform and the end gateways and the exit and portal intact. That's it for today's tutorial, comment if you want more Minecraft tutorials like this one, subscribe for more Minecraft content and don't forget to check out my advanced craft series where in the last week's episode I have built the world fastest cactus farm, producing me over 840,000 items per hour. And for the next episode I have already placed 1 million obsidian, like uh, no seriously check out that series.